We're here today with Wharton Accounting Professor Allison Nicoletti to talk about her latest research. Allison, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So you're going to talk to us today a little bit about your dissertation. So first of all, could you give us kind of the broad overview of what you looked at? Sure. So my dissertation examines how external auditors and bank regulators affect loan loss provision decisions. So the loan loss provision, it's analogous to bad debt expense for a non-financial firm. And for banks, it's one of the most important accruals. It makes up a large part of their income statement. And then also it has implications because it's tied to their loan quality. So this is a really important decision that banks care about and also that the bank regulators and external auditors are concerned with. And there's a lot of discretion that goes into coming up with the loan loss provision estimate. So what's interesting is that bank regulators are involved in on-site safety and soundness examinations, and external auditors come in and actually audit the financial statements. But these two groups have very different objectives and incentives, where bank regulators are coming at it more from a safety and soundness perspective, whereas auditors are coming at it from a do, do the financial statements comply with general accepted accounting principles. So what I find in my paper is that Bank regulators and auditors both seem to increase the timing with which banks recognize loan losses. But at banks where there's both a strict regulator and an external auditor, these banks are actually less timely compared to banks that are unaudited but have a strict regulator. So what this seems to suggest is that the auditor is constraining timeliness relative to what the bank regulator would prefer. And this is, again, probably tied to the objectives and incentives that they have, where auditors are concerned about earnings management and other discretionary choices that banks might be making that aren't necessarily tied to loan quality, whereas the regulator is less concerned with that. So what is the implications there for, first of all, for a bank or for even is there implications for like a customer who's coming in to get a loan? Well, there's definitely implications for the bank because the bank manager is trying to balance these two potentially opposing viewpoints. So you have bank regulators who are pushing more timeliness versus the auditor who maybe prefers less timeliness relative to the regulator. So that's one of the takeaways is that bank managers do have to balance that. But more importantly is that loan loss accounting standards are actually changing, and this was a direct result of the financial crisis. So one of the concerns with the current rules is that auditors are concerned about the discretion that banks have. And that was why they restrict it, is that they're concerned that banks are managing earnings or doing other opportunistic things with the accounting. This was, also, this was a problem, though, in the financial crisis because the threshold to recognize a loss was very high. So we saw banks waiting quite a bit of time before they recognized any losses. So the new accounting standards will be more of an expected approach. So banks will be recognizing losses over the life of the loan. But there's going to be a lot more discretion that goes into that. So as far as how this regulator-auditor conflict gets resolved or actually gets worse under the new accounting standards is an open question. Now, are there any implications for just the average person who's trying to get a loan or even a business trying to get a loan? Or is this more on the bank side? Well, there could be some implications as far as the new accounting standards going into play. So to the extent that banks are going to have to recognize greater loan losses – that has to hit somewhere on their balance sheet. So if it's coming out of their capital and there's bank capital requirements, so that may actually result in restricting lending purposes. So it could have an effect like that. Uh, my research probably can't speak to that quite as much just because I'm looking at a different accounting standard. But um, it does really just more speak to the bank managers themselves. And then probably regulators, auditors, and groups that are involved in overseeing the audit profession. Now, is there with bank managers, I mean, has there been sort of a historical in terms of like whether they would sort of trend towards what the regulators are looking for versus the auditors or vice versa? And are there, I guess, prevailing wins on as far as that goes? Or just does it depend on the bank? Or So I think it probably depends is the, the short answer. But there's been a lot of conflict between the regulator and auditor over the last 20 or 25 years. So in the late 1990s, there was a conflict, again, between the regulators and auditors where it seemed that banks were trending more towards the regulator view, where they were reserving to a great extent for loan losses, even perhaps more than the economics of their loan portfolio would imply. So the SEC, or so kind of a group that's more aligned probably with the external audit function, was not happy about that because it was basically shifting income between reporting periods. So there was a struggle between the bank regulators and the auditors or in the SEC. And what ended up happening was is that the bank regulators and the SEC issued new guidance saying 
this is what you should be doing for loan losses. So actually, the SEC ended up winning that battle. But now, following the crisis, it seems that we're actually shifting more back to a standard that perhaps regulators would prefer. So I think that we'll probably see banks shifting more back to the regulator view. But they were more in the audit SEC camp earlier in the decade. And so what's next for this research? What are you going to look at next? So I have a different project that I'm going to be looking at that's still related to bank regulation, but it's looking at the Dodd-Frank Act. So what we're interested in this paper is looking at specific bright line asset thresholds. So many bank regulations and other regulations in general, but they have these thresholds like $10 billion in total assets, for instance, where above that threshold, banks are subject to significant regulatory costs. So what we're looking at is whether those bright line thresholds seem to incentivize merger activity. And if they do, do these mergers end have different outcomes relative to other mergers. So the preliminary findings of that would suggest that these thresholds do spur additional merger activity and that these, these mergers that result from these regulatory cost motivations do seem to end up having poor outcomes relative to other mergers. Great. Thank you so much for talking with us Thanks. today.